So this time, I'm going to bring a slightly different perspective to the proceedings. So what I want to tell you about is string diagrams. So string diagrams are a different way of notating natural transformations and functors. So probably not this time, but next time, I want to show you how it looks very funky when we go to monads and uh, adjunctions and how everything works out wonderfully. So I'll just introduce you to them this time. So what is the idea of a string diagram? So traditionally, if you've got a, a functor between categories, so we've got a category C and a category D, then you might write a, a functor between them uh, like this, capital F there. So what we want to do in string diagrams is take what the topologists would call the Poincaré dual of this. So we replace dots by lines and lines by dots. So let's look. So uh, something that looks like this. So this is supposed to be D, and this is supposed to be C, and this is supposed to be F. Okay, so that's looking pretty dull so far, not, not terribly interesting. So the important thing to note at this point is that I'm coming from whatever that side is to whatever this side is. Okay, so we'll see that this, this makes sense when we're doing composition. So why is this a sensible thing to do? So when we compose, so if we, if we do a functor F and then a functor G, so we, oops, we're going from C to D to E, that is supposed to be equal to the functor FG. Uh, sorry, oh, ho, ho. That was, that was it. it was exactly to avoid having to switch the order that I'm coming this way. So the point is that I don't have to switch the order. So uh, that means do F first and then do G. So we look exactly the same way around. So that, that, that's why I've decided to orient things in that direction. So, stop me making that mistake. So, yeah, so here we would just have, if we do uh, E, D and C, and we've got F and, uh, and a G there, so that's just supposed to be the same as something like okay. So it's looking pretty dull here. It, it's not very interesting on functors. It's going to get far more exciting once we get to natural transformations. So I'm not controlling my board very well yet. Um, because I'm going to have to rub this out. So that's that's the gist of functors, but it's not very good, not very interesting there. So let's see what happens when we get to natural transformation. So the traditional way of drawing a natural transformation, again, I, I might go contrary to uh, other people's conventions. So if I have a functor, I have a functor f and a functor f primed, and I have a natural transformation between them. So that natural transformation is theta, and I'm going from from C to D, then again I'm going to take, take what's called the Poincaré dual, uh, which just means replace. So this is a two-dimensional thing. So now we're working two. Before we were working in one dimension, so uh, zero-dimensional things went to one-dimensional things. Now we're working in two dimensions in the whole of the plane. So zero-dimensional things get uh, get changed into two-dimensional things. One-dimensional things stay one-dimensional things, and two-dimensional things become points. So so in our string diagram language, we would notate this. Oh, we're just going to be sitting inside a plane. So the little dot there becomes the whole of the region here on this side. Uh, the f becomes a line. And then the theta becomes a point. And then the f prime becomes a line at the bottom here. So we've got sorry, f, f prime, we've got a c, and we've got a d. And got a now, the important thing to note is that if you look, if you look down at the bottom here, uh, we have the thing that I encoded on the last blackboard for the functor f. So it's just line for c, uh, dot for f, and then uh, a line for d. And at the top, we've got c, f prime, and d. So this is showing that theta is going from the thing at the bottom which is exactly the same as that, to the thing at the top. Now, this is this is not a terribly easy thing to draw, drawing a little dot in the middle. So, we, in fact, in practice, what we do is we don't replace our two-dimensional blob in the middle by a dot, by a zero. We, we actually 
enlarge the book. So, like that. so, so we have a theta. So this is the this is, is the basic thing. We we rewrite all things of that form in this book. And as I say, diagrams go upwards and from the right to the left. So what can we do with these? Well, we can compose in various ways. So how can how can we compose? We compose natural transformations in in two ways. We can do as we've seen before, the way you stick two functors together. So we can, if we have natural transformation phi from g to g primed, and this is going from d to e, and we have theta going from f to f primed, and we have a c here, then we just draw this by gluing the two pictures together. So that's going to correspond to a picture in string diagram language that just looks like phi here and a theta here. OK. And if I just stick the labels on for you, a G, an F, an F primed, a G primed, and we have three regions. So the regions correspond to the categories C, D, and E. So often, um, it's convenient to miss out the labels depending um, on how obvious it is where things are coming from and going to. So that's the one composition. This is the composition for the functorial direction. We can also compose in a natural transformation direction. So we can compose two natural transformations. So in that case, we would have something like uh, a diagram like this. So we would have theta primed and theta going from, theta goes from f to f primed, squeeze that on, and then theta primed is going from f primed to f prime primed, and uh, so f is supposed to go from c to d. So we're going from c to d. Okay. So we just draw that by sticking the two things on top of one another. So in this case, we have something that looks like this. We have theta primed, and we have a theta, and we can label these f, f primed, f prime primed. And this goes from C to D. So this is just telling us we've got two natural transformations, uh, which are composable along the uh, source and target, the target of that one, the source of that one, and we can just glue them together. Okay. So that's, that's the basics, but we can get more advanced than this. Um, what can we do with this? So I could draw you a picture of some ways of composing things. So if I just draw, drew you a picture like this, and if we suppose that this is, uh, this is C, this is C, and this is theta, and we have D here, and E here, and we've got an F, a G, an H, and we've got uh, a, remember the notation from before, I use, usually use a slightly different notation. So this is just the identity functor from C to itself. Uh, so this is supposed to correspond to a natural transformation, which is old money, we would write in the following way. This is just C to C, and we've got a D. Whoop, running out of time here. So we've got a natural transformation theta from 1 on C. Now what we can actually do, what we tend to do here, is if we've got this identity, we can actually remove it. And so we would just draw it like that. We lose nothing by removing it. So I'll, I'll tell you what this has to do with monads next time when we start seeing some, some more exciting things.